and welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dai Chang in Hanoi and let's check out our latest updates for the hour. We will take a look at Nguyen Anh journalism career in France. And what is more, Vietnam ensures safety in developing nuclear power. The top news for the hour, thousands of people visited the Ho Chi Minh Mausoleum in Hanoi to commemorate the 125th birthday of late President Ho Chi Minh on May the 19th. Visitors from across the country and abroad have queued since early morning to pay the respects. The mausoleum's management have reported that visitor numbers since April the 30th have spiked from 16,000 to 18,000 with a peak of 28,000. For the past few days, delegations from ministries, party bodies, armed forces, overseas Vietnamese and international visitors have paid tribute through visits. A ceremony to mark the 125th birthday of Ho Chi Minh took place in the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh on Monday. At the event, chairman of the Vietnamese Cambodian Association provided a review on the life and the contributions of the great leader. Earlier, another ceremony also on the occasion of Ho Chi Minh's 125th birthday took place in Khmut province in Laos. At the event, Vietnamese ambassador to Laos Nguyen Mạnh Hùng and other delegates offered incense and flowers to the late president. Speaking at the event, General Secretary of the Lao Vietnam Friendship Organization Sai Kong Sang Yasin underlined the relationship between the two countries, which was established by President Ho Chi Minh and Lao's President Supa Nu Vong, was a friendship of solidarity almost unparalleled in international diplomatic affairs. Vietnam late President Ho Chi Minh asserted many times that there is no conflict between religions and patriotism, and they in fact support each other. He always wished for the union of people from different ethnic groups and different religions, and our following story will show you how that united strength contributed to the nation. 59 years have passed since the one and only time that Chung Ngoc Anh had a chance to meet President Ho Chi Minh. Yet, he still vividly remembers that day. It was in the middle of August 1956 when Uncle Ho visited the institutes of Southern ethnic officials. Five Khmer monks studying there at that time, including Anh, were attentively asked after by the president. Uncle Ho visited us and told us to take good care of our health so that we could serve our people and our nation. He was so good to us that I can never forget it. Ang's feeling for Uncle Ho represents the common feeling of his people and even other ethnic groups and religions. The late president managed to find the humanitarian values of religions and connect them with moral standards of society. He then linked them all together to serve the nation's greater goods. We always consider the late president Ho Chi Minh as a shining example. His ideals guide us and lead us towards greater achievements and the good in life. President Ho Chi Minh issued many beneficial policies for ethnic groups. He considered those groups a great strength that could be used to unite the whole nation. In return, the people of many groups consider him a deliverer of their faith. Ho Chi Minh used his ideals to break the borders between religions and ethnic groups. His charm, his policies, his ways of moving people are still being studied until today to be used for the purpose of maintaining the unity of Vietnam. 
Ho Chi Minh, also known as Nguyen Ai Quoc, is regarded as an inspirational leader, a hero of Vietnam's national liberation struggle, and a world cultural activist. He was also a journalist and one of the founders of Vietnam's revolutionary press. During his life, Nguyen Ai Quoc wrote over 2,000 articles, nearly 300 poems, and nearly 500 fictional pieces in several languages. The next report will feature his journalism in France, where Nguyen Ai Quoc started his writing career. During his research in France, Nguyen Ai Quoc explored the role and influence of the press. As a special tool in the ideological and cultural fronts, he regarded the press as playing a pivotal role in the national liberation and development. Nguyen Ai Quoc's very first article was published in French newspaper L'Humanité in August 1919. In 1921, Nguyen Ai Quoc founded the Union of French Colonial Nations and later published the newspaper Le Barrière in French in April 1922. The newspaper was a forum for the public in French colonies to share their concerns, feelings and aspirations. Later President Ho Chi Minh was the founder, editor in chef main correspondent and also manager of the La Paria. The newspaper played a role as a platform to publish Ho Chi Minh's articles. Moreover, thanks to this experience, President Ho Chi Minh learned managerial skills to later apply to the Vietnamese revolutionary press. According to a French researcher, Nguyen Ai Quoc wrote more than 100 articles during his stay in France from 1919 to 1923. Nguyen Ai Quoc wrote many articles, especially in La Paria, without leaving his pen name. He had been writing for the La Paria during his stay in France until 1923. During the time, he also contributed articles for many more newspapers, including those of the Communist Party and the French Trade Union Movement. He was keen on spreading his words to as many people as possible. According to Dr. Alain Ruscio, Nguyen Ai Quoc's articles were simply written and accessible to all. In addition to a simple style of writing, Ho Chi Minh's articles covered topics related to international concerns and issues. The topics involved not only lives of Vietnamese people during war time, but also lives of victims of racial discrimination in Africa and America. He wanted to depict people's lives in colonial countries. Articles written by President Ho Chi Minh contributed to spread the Marxism-Leninism, awakening consciousness about freedom for Vietnamese people and other peoples in the world, and also stand as a good example of journalism. Vietnam is an intriguing blend of many charms. This land is where all manner of stunning landscapes await like a visual feast, rivaled only by the beauty of its people and their abundantly rich tradition and culture. Here is where you can relive the past in richest color or live it up in the bright lights of the big city. With so much more to offer, Vietnam is simply unforgettable. You're tuning in to VTV News. Now, a conference held in Nha Trang City by the Ministry of Industry and Trade revealed Vietnam's industrial zone policy over the past five years. The conference analyzed the implementation of Decision 105 in 2009 in managing industrial zones. By 2020, Vietnam is predicted to have nearly 1,600 industrial clusters. However, according to the Ministry of Industry and Trade, the establishment of the industrial clusters has failed to reflect the real demand of businesses. Investment in infrastructure has still remained limited and progress has been slow. Industrial zones have also suffered from low occupancy rates of just a 58 for the short term, the government and related agencies will concentrate on trying to resolve existing problems to creating more jobs and stable incomes for workers, especially in rural areas. To news related to the development of nuclear energy in Vietnam, the country had initial plans to commence construction of the 4,000 megawatt Ning Thuc nuclear power plant late last year. The date, however, was postponed for concern of lack of preparation. As Vietnam looks to a future of nuclear power, authorities look to ensure adequate infrastructure, human resource, 
source and above all safety standards in development. Professor Pham Zui Hien began researching nuclear power and related subjects in 1960. He shares his concern of Vietnam's nuclear power plants and the potential safety hazards that can accompany this development. This project cannot be rushed. If we push the timing of such plans, we expose ourselves to many risks. While the reality is that we are not ready in terms of either resources or infrastructure. According to the National Power Development Plan, the original construction starting date would have meant completion of the Ning Thuận 1 and 2 nuclear power plants in 2022. Nevertheless, Vietnam wants to guarantee the best of safety standards before construction kickstarts. Safety will always be the priority and the number one concern when it comes to any nuclear power project. Vietnam is fully keeping this in mind. We are trying our best to select suitable human resources and ensure that all site development and infrastructure will first and foremost meet all safety standards. This will take time. Experts have emphasized that Vietnam is implementing its preparatory work while following up on advice from the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA. Apart from guaranteeing the use of advanced and safe technology, the quality of human resources required in nuclear energy development has also raised concerns. In recent times, the country has sent over 300 students to Russia for training on the subject. Some have finished and returned home. That begs the question as to when these graduates can apply their knowledge. So the issue of how to effectively use skilled human resources is also being worked into preparation. At present, Vietnam looks to having the first nuclear power plant go into operation by around 2023, with investment from Russia, while the second will develop based on cooperation from Japan. The National Assembly approved the plan to construct Vietnam's first nuclear power plant in 2009. The Sui Mơ Festival is currently being celebrated in Bắc Giang province. Celebrated on the first day of the fourth lunar month, the Sui Mơ Festival is held to worship the Holy Mother of the Three Palaces, a goddess according to local cultural and religious belief. The festival has become a big cultural event that attracts many domestic and foreign visitors to Bắc Giang province. Tourists can participate in activities such as cockfighting, singing and dance performances, and breast the festival is to pray for peace and fruitful crops. And our bulletin now continues with the updated weather forecast. And that's all we have for now. For more updated news and information, just log on to vtv4.vn or our YouTube channel at vtv4go. Thank you very much for tuning in and goodbye for now from Hanoi.